Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. So today we are going to a home. It's a hoard home. They've been essentially keeping all their trash for looks like maybe a year or so. Hey Xavier, what do we got here? A nice telescope. Oh my God. Nice. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to Nashville. First off, welcome back to Nashville. So today we are going to a home. It's a hoard home. They've been essentially keeping all their trash for looks like maybe a year or so. Um, so it's not like a belongings hoard or anything like that. It's just trash, which are our toughest ones because those bring the bugs and the smells and all of the, uh, the fun stuff that goes along with that. Um, but the situation is uh, family going through some stuff. Is They're getting a divorce, uh, so they're selling their home. But they obviously can't sell the home in the current condition. So what we do in those situations is instead of them having to pay an astronomical amount to get this thing cleaned up and presentable and ready for the market, uh, ready for it to list, we'll come in, purchase the property, clean it out ourselves, and, and fix and flip it. It's a great solution for families when they might not have the, the money to pay to get it fixed up and cleaned out, ready to sell for themselves. So they can come to us, treat us as almost a one-stop shop and we say hey you know with the amount of money we're gonna have to put into this here's our purchase price and if they like it and it works for them um, then that's great then we then we can handle all of the cleaning ourselves all of the item removal and getting it presentable uh, for for the next sale and to, to make it a home again for the next family to come in so that's what we're doing today all right guys so welcome to our job site today as we talked about earlier this is a um, Pretty typical trash hoarding home. Um, so what you see is probably a couple years of neglect, um, a couple cats in here, and uh, the homeowners just seem to kind of stop throwing away their trash. So we'll walk through, talk through what our job is today, uh, and hopefully we can we can finish today as well and get this place cleaned out. Um, so we'll start back here, walk through before the crews gets in here. It's important to note right now I'm not wearing any PPE. So no gloves, no mask. We're not disturbing anything right now. I'm not touching anything. Now when we start working, PPE will be worn. So we'll have mask on at the minimum a N95 and then gloves. Um, and then depending on what people are going through, it suits, definitely long pants and shoes. So bathrooms are always a little scary. So not bad. So what you see here is again, a lot of trash, just neglect. You know, the house has got really good bones. Uh, but everything in here has to go. We'll make quick order of this because it's just in a trash bag or a trash can and then out of the dumpster. So we'll continue on into the living room. Same thing here. You guys can't smell it, but I had some cats. Um, so a lot of this floor is gonna have to go. Probably all the baseboards are gonna have to go uh, in order to get rid of that ammonia smell um, and some of the cat smell in here too. So keep walking through again. Mainly trash. This is the master. If you want to take a look at that, we can't both fit. So that's going to take a whole dumpster in itself. Go around here, kitchen. So I'm sure we will have to throw away the fridge, molded food. Would you consider this a level five hoard? Yes, I would. Not because of the amount, but because of the the contents. You know, if we've seen much worse hoards, um, but if, you know, maybe they kept the newspapers for 50 years. That's a lot easier to deal with this type of situation because of what we're gonna uncover and have to deal with. That's why the PPE gets important, mask, gloves, all that type of stuff. So yeah, this goes into the garage, we won't go in there yet. <clears throat> but you can see this floor, it's, uh, it's gonna have to go. It's just got too much moisture and feces damage. Honestly, there's not enough cleaning that we could do to save that. Yeah, and then everything in here, we'll have to get rid of the fridge, all of the coffee makers, 
It's just everything's too far contaminated to keep. The tough part during the renovation is going to be, you know, we'll have to do some serious cleaning before we do any painting. Um, and that includes the ceiling, all of the walls. But I do think it's got good bones and we can save it and make it a home again for somebody. All right, so the bonus room area. As you can see, carpet is, has to be gone. Um, again, urine, feces. Up here, we got a <coughs> similar story. Trash, um, old furniture, old desks, and more cat feces. So, I mean, it's a sad story. It really is. But, you know, that's where we can help. That's the good news is, is we'll come in here. They don't have to put it on the market. They don't have to have other people come in and check it out. They call us. We'll come in judgment-free, clean it up, uh, and repurpose it for a, a nice, a really, really nice home in a nice area with a big yard for a, a young family to kind of take advantage of. So that's the goal here today. The goal is to get all of this out in one day. Got a crew of about six coming in and uh, they're gonna make quick work of all this. And uh, the question will be, do we have enough room in the dumpsters or do we have to get another dumpster? Follow along, we'll get some good footage, some good before and afters. Um, like I said, goal of the end of the day is everything out. And then tomorrow we can start having contractors and potential buyers come in to start the process of uh, getting this property back to normal. This is, believe it or not, pretty common. So what happens is when someone starts hoarding their trash, is they know they don't want to keep it in their living space, so they start to throw it out of their living space. Which is what you see is, they start to toss them over here, stack them nice and neat, got lazy, start throwing it, throwing it, throwing it, and eventually they just started opening the door from their kitchen to put it out until they ran out of room. That's when you start using your house as a dumpster as well. So it starts in one small spot and then it grows and grows and grows and then it's eventually the whole house until it's overwhelming. And then no one person can fix this. So that's when you have to call somebody. Um, but I do believe, I don't think I've ever seen this many trash bags in one garage. This is a whole dumpster, which is um, tough on our plans because in order to get this done today, we've got to probably turn five or six full dumpsters, 30 yard dumpsters. And uh, it's hard for a dumpster company to keep up with that. Uh, but luckily we're here until we get it done <clears throat> and Redbox is gonna support us uh, through that. So we'll see how much this does to the dumpster and uh, we'll have some good afters, that's for sure. It'll be nice and, and open, maybe not clean, but open, so. How many trash bags do you think are here if you had to guess? Oh man, a thousand? At least a thousand. Yeah. For sure, because that's, that's dense, you know what I'm saying? Those things are packed in there, so maybe more, but no less than a thousand, that's for sure. Oh, sweet. This is what you do. This, this oh, is a place right here. Right something. Oh, so that was a door that I opened. Yeah. It's just full of trash bags. Okay, that makes sense. There's some really nice shit. Oh, we got there. In there. Nice. It's funny because I always, in our little work group chat, I always send a little sloth emoji. <laughs> Two, one. Y'all get to work in there. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Another sloth. <laughs> All right, what were we about to do? Open this fridge up that's been sitting here for God knows how long. Oh yeah. Look right here. Oh, wow. The basement, I mean the basement, the uh, bottom's where it is. That's where all the meat's at. At least it's not off. Or is it? No, it's on, so it's off. It ain't as bad. This. I'll get it this out of here. Alright, if you had to guess, how many water bottles do we have here? Uh, hmm. Seven. <laughs> 24 <laughs> uh, no, 
Probably, I would right. say at least a good, at least few hundred. We got, it looks like an old sewing machine. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, man. You completely stripped that eight. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Man! <laughs> no worry! No worries. That just made my day. All computer stuff. Tore all, every single one torn apart. My name is Bob Vren. I am the owner and operator of uh, Redbox Plus of North Nashville. Uh, one of the unique uh, offerings that we have with our dumpster service, as you can see, we have two porta potties that are attached to a 30 yard dumpster. So what that uh, allows us is the capability to deliver two services uh, on one truck and with one driver on time. Uh, it gives us the flexibility to, uh, to help speed up the uh, progress uh, with a uh, clean up on a restoration site like this. Uh, we love partnering up with uh, Spalding Decon because uh, they need uh, time is of the essence. Uh, so we offer a unique service that uh, delivers not only uh, on-time service, but quick service and quick responses. Sometimes you gotta organize it as you clean it. <laughs> So tell us a little about where we are now. We're underneath the house in the crawl space and somehow good amount of trash back here in the back of a crawl space. <laughs> Part is on the other side of the door, it's also filled up with a bunch of trash. What, what do you think happened in there? It's a science experiment. Yeah. Oh. Was it all maggots? I don't know. Dead maggots? And some not dead ones? I'm not sure. That have it hatched, maybe? John, so Nate is hands down can move any piece of furniture no matter how big by himself with a dolly. He doesn't need anybody to move anything. He's a magician with the dolly. <laughs> I have to bat away the moving company to try to steal him. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Nate, <laughs> Nate works here! <laughs> hey, Xavier, what do we got here? A nice telescope. <laughs> oh my god. What? Christmas came early, Xavier. Yeah, this ain't no cheap Barbie. Let's have a look. Yeah, I didn't see no Barbies like this growing up. Yeah, that's something different. Collector edition. You wanna walk around? Yeah. So big cats, all of the living room stuff's gone. Oh, of course. Pretty gross still, pretty slippery. Careful. Oh yeah, dishwasher, I mean, uh, washer machine, dryer, living room stuff, dining room stuff. Kitchen's cleared off. I actually think they can save some of these because these are good, these are good. It just has to be sanded and, and you know, restained and cleaned up and all that, but this still works, it's still be clean. Both appliances still work. Obviously, they'll put a new floor. And then, yeah, so tomorrow we've got this beast. Uh, so this was the master, and if I were to guess, this is where they started hoarding after the garage. Outside, and then we'll go upstairs. So we've done a little bit up here, moved some big furniture. This will take an hour tomorrow. The hardest part is going to be getting these couches out. Uh, we might just bring some tools, saw them up, chop them up in here. Didn't quite get to where we wanted to get to. Um, it was a lot more than what we kind of expected. Good day. All in all, good day. Good morning guys, bright and early, uh, almost 6 a.m. Getting an early start today at the Horde because 
we didn't get quite as much done, uh, meaning we didn't finish yesterday. So we gotta get out there a little early, um, finish up. We got the master bedroom and the bonus room left. Other than that, we're all good. So we'll have three em empty dumpsters uh, ready to be filled today and then we should be complete with that. Join us as we finish up in the next couple hours and get this thing done. Uh, we'll do a quick walkthrough before we get started. Crews are showing up right now. We've got three empty dumpsters. Uh, yeah, so let's come check it out. Lots of junk left, lots of trash. This is probably a whole dumpster in itself. So the last piece in here, a couple big pieces of furniture. Those will be a little difficult to get down, but Nate will knock it out. If we have time, we'll pull carpet in here as well. But obviously, priority is getting all the stuff out. Let's get to work. Hold on, hold on, pull it back up. Maybe it'll break and be a little bit loud. Uh. Woo! Uh. Uh. Hard part of the day. What we should have done is had this dumpster placed very conveniently directly underneath this window so we could have just tossed it all out. But because we didn't think and plan, we now have to toss it out, pick it up, toss it in. But we still think that's the quicker way than loading them up, bringing them all the way down and dealing with some heavy bag or dumpster. So, so now we just gotta toss them all out and then pick them up, doubling our work. But lesson learned. Dude, trick or treat! Oh! Good job! <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, Woo! Hard. <laughs> you can hear it. Now, I've been in some houses to where you can see an inch to two everywhere. Even in front of the TV between the couch and the entertainment stand. Oh, man. And the box is falling apart. All right. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about what we're doing and why at this moment? Pulling the carpet because there's really no saving it, honestly. It, there's no decontamination of it because there's been so much sitting on it for so long. Unless you, uh, you want to drop them in a bag. I mean, we can just take yeah. one side and one side and just walk it down. Okay. It's easy since you come small, it's good. That one might have to be carried out. Yeah, that's pretty big. If you look at the subfloor, you can see where some of the urine had soaked through to the subfloor. The good news is none of it's rotted. Um, I think if you do some cleaning and seal this subfloor, you won't have to replace any of it because it's still structurally sound. Yeah, as long as you remove the carpet and seal the subfloor that's affected, then I don't think the new homeowner will have any issues with smells. You're going to obviously want to remove all the baseboards and tack strips because you can see some of these baseboards where the cat has decided to use the bathroom the most are really affected. And once they're that effect and that saturated, you can't clean them. Um, so the only option is just to remove uh, them. But overall, yeah. exposing the cell floor is a good idea because it looks good. And that's gonna make whoever's gonna flip this house, their job a whole lot easier and cheaper because they don't have to worry about uh, the subfloor. Just kind of cosmetic stuff at this point. Believe it or not, 
Uh, new baseboards, new paint, new flooring uh, is going to make this place back to a home. Again. So yeah, overall, good sign for the for the new owners. I want to fuck on them. I got a band aid. <laughs> Did you call yourself? Yeah, hell yeah. First thing in odor control is you gotta remove the source, and that is the source of our odor, as well as this floor. But we're not gonna remove floor. We're just gonna remove carpet and pad, and that'll help with the odor a little bit. So just anything to make it a little bit more presentable. Maybe about an hour, hour. A couple of scented before. candles when exactly, you start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some Yankee candles. Maybe some of those Christmas tree things you hang in your car. Maybe a couple of those. Well, we're gonna check out the crawl space. Um, usually I wouldn't be as concerned with the crawl space. But because we've found trash in the attic and every closet, I'm thinking that the crawl space is gonna bring us some gifts. And sure enough, if you look back there, you can see 30, 40 trash bags. I guess that's where they started to throw their trash away. Uh, and then I assume it was too hard, and that's why they started throwing it in here. Um, so, all in all, not too bad. Pleasantly surprised, actually, at the state of the crawl space. The ductwork looks really good, which is really surprising. Um, foundation looks good. There's not standing water. Moisture levels look okay. Seem okay. I haven't done any readings, but uh, yeah, we'll just clean it out and get all the trash out, just like the rest of the house, and all good. All right guys, so we are wrapped on the hoard job for the week. Got everything accomplished we needed to. I think we pulled out uh, eight dumpsters, eight 30 yard dumpsters of stuff, 5,000 pounds of trash in each. Um, so a complete guesstimate is around 40,000 pounds worth of trash we pulled out in uh, basically a day and a half. Figuring out what's next with the property, it's either selling to an investor or uh, fixing it and flipping it ourselves. Uh, so now, now the fun part, begins and we can start to make the transition uh, into a normal home again and a happy home for some new family. So last thing guys, uh, you know, if you live in the Middle Tennessee area and have any water restoration, mold remediation, uh, hoarding needs, you know who to call. Also, we are expanding into Memphis this year. So we should be opening up in Memphis uh, middle of June, early July. Uh, so as we open up there, we're gonna be doing the exact same type of work in Memphis. So if you are in need or know of somebody in need in any of those two cities, please uh, give us a call or find us on, on the internet and uh, we'll be happy to help. So thanks guys. Uh, thanks for joining us and uh, I'm sure you guys will be back in Nashville uh, for the next one. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.